Uh, it's the start of Glitch Week. Uh, what up, Glitch? Uh, we're going to talk about comic books. Uh, Glitch, you probably know I like comic books. Uh, I guess you are briefly my Facebook friend. I'm Doc Savage, Man of Bronze. That's a real old school comic. I love them. And uh, I remember one of my favorite old school comics. I'm going to tell you a little bit about about it. It was, uh, and I'm. I read a whole lot of it. I'm not like I'm not like a geek, necessarily. So I might have some of the details wrong, but. Um, I really liked uh, Amish guy with a laser gun. And uh, it was kind of interesting. Like it was kind of cheesy, except for the uh, the drawings were so amazing. Um, anyway. I have uh, I have most of the comics of the first season I guess you'd call it uh, the first run and the first one was uh, let me set the scene right so it's a uh, planet earth glitch and uh, aliens come and not actually aliens are actually robots um, machines and uh, it's a kind of invasion but it was, it's like almost like a we gonna we're gonna claim your planet invasion but we're not ready to use it. So uh, all these machines land uh, all over Earth and uh, the biggest land on the North Pole and the South Pole. And virtually everything that everybody and everything that, you know, all machines, anybody using a machine and all, uh, all machines that are functioning um, get attacked by these, uh, these robots. They look like they're made of melted wax. So they kind of look organic. You know, they some of them look human, some look insectoid. They look all like all sorts of things. They could be anything. Um, and you know, we fight them off. Of course, the military goes all crazy. But um, you shoot one, uh, it breaks apart in a million pieces, and uh, those million pieces attach themselves to uh, other robots or some of the pieces gather together and become a different kind of robot so they just never stop uh, fighting until every single machine or any, any any single person ever using a machine is destroyed and uh, like the first the first magazine that came out was uh, a the cover was a uh, a wooden sailing ship which I guess is I guess it was a rep representation of a wooden vessel uh, um, a three-masted ship uh, from uh, Seattle, Washington, in the United States, um, sailing to uh, the North Pole, and all these people get off uh, with sled dogs. Like it looks like it makes you think that you're looking at some sort of like late 1700s uh, expedition to the North Pole, and all these guys in furs, you know, sled dogs and stuff like that, sledding to the North Pole, and they get there, and there's this there's this pyramid. That's what the the, for the cover of the, the magazine was it's a sailing ship. You could see uh, Arctic ice in the distance, and then the further distance, a black pyramid. And uh, so these people reached the black pyramid. They all slid into a, kind of a chamber into the center. There's just dogs and human beings and everything like that. They all leave their sleds and uh, move to the outside, and then someone pulls out. Uh, those plungers, you know, like a dynamite plunger from like, uh, well, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, you, uh, you spin a flywheel, that flywheel generates electricity, electricity whips down a, a wire, goes into a blasting cap, which explodes, which explodes the dynamite, which is a mixture of, uh, you know, like black powder and, uh, uh, nitroglycerin. And it explodes, and this whole this whole pyramid just goes up in a big big blue flame, except for the pyramid falls down into pieces, and those pieces rise up as creatures, and those creatures uh, kill all the human beings. And one of the pictures was this robot holding up the the, the broken bits of the plunger and holding up the gear wheels. It's like holding up the gear wheels to its eyes. Uh, because you know it had been destroying computers and and uh, um, you know complex machinery all this time, and here was this really simple um, generator of electricity that destroyed 
this massive complex. And then, uh, but then it kind of goes back in time a little bit. Um, the magazine goes back to uh, uh, these uh, these aliens, these alien machines landing on Earth, totally annihilating. Uh, I, I actually I'd call that decimating. Um, actually, decimating means uh, killing nine out of ten, essentially leaving it a tenth. Uh, decimating. It's Roman. Um, and uh, I think it's Roman. Don't quote me on anything, if you if you would. Thanks. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Like they they move really fast. They're really effective. And so the Earth was reduced to uh, a farming community instantly. And who was uh, the survivors? The the hands down survivors, because uh, a lot of this takes place in North America, and that was uh, the Amish, uh, the uh, like the uh, the. The, the northeastern Amish of the of North America, um, fully functioning, like they were barely they were barely touched, and actually and also barely affected by the bizarrety of it all. It's almost like the Amish had predicted it. All right, I, I won't go I won't go I won't go over ten minutes with this, but I'll tell you some more about it. Um, so uh, the Amish saw this as a uh, an acknowledgement of what they've always believed in that uh, technology, labor saving, all you know. Uh, well, I I won't go on and on about the Amish, but you know they basically said, yeah, this is what you get. This is uh, your punishment. But on the flip side of that, they realized that nobody was going to be able to use their uh, you know iPads and 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 whatnot. They're all going to starve and die, and. Uh, they stopped referring to everybody as outsiders and started referring to everybody as uh, extended brothers and sisters. And the Amish, the Amish went to work. They just started like, they started expanding and they started like, you know, uh, showing people how to survive, how to, gr how to grow. And uh, it was seen as their uh, religious duty. Um, and there was one particular uh, Amish guy and he was like, uh, he was really, really tall. He was like an exceptionally tall man, and uh, he hardly spoke. Uh, and uh, he wasn't. Uh, he was kind of an uh, unacknowledged leader of the larger community, just because, like, if he said something, it was like law. And he just rarely spoke. He would just say, "This needs to be done." And he'd set about doing it, and everyone would just think, "I think he's right," and they'd start doing it too. Um, and so he really set the tone, and the tone, his tone was, um, "Everybody around us that needs help needs help from us, and it is our duty to help them." And uh, it was it was really beautiful. So you watch. Uh, so basically, every every you think everything's destroyed uh, on Earth, except for there's huge amounts of people still left. And uh, you know, there's all communities all around the world uh, that are uh, are uh, subsistence living. Uh, you know, farmers, uh, people living off the earth. Um, but the Amish were, were just doing it at such a high level of uh, of excellence um, that it almost looked like you know people are going to bounce back right away. Um, at least bounce back as far as like we're not going to we're going to suffer the least amount because the Amish came helping us. And it would be this one particular Amish guy, you know, striding about, like just taller than everybody. Um, everything he said, he was just—he just felt he was absolutely right. And uh, and that was that was the great thing about the very first comic, the first issue, was uh, it was so simple, and you didn't. There was also no explanations really. Um, you didn't know what happened necessarily at the North Pole, or why it had to happen that way. Um, and then the whole thing is just. The Amish and uh, the outsiders suddenly becoming uh, um, as one. All right, so glitch. That's a little bit about my very f favorite comic, um, Amish guy with a laser gun. Um, it's pretty epic. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I suppose. I guess we got a whole glitch week to do it. Might as well. What else are we gonna be doing? Glitch week. <laughs>